Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Sam and I'm an artist and I help other artists to grow in skills and confidence with my online membership. And I also teach other artists how to make serious money doing something that they love every day with my coaching programme. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to price your artwork. Always a difficult subject. Again, talking about money, we don't find it easy, but it's really important that you have these things in place if you really want to make some money from your art. So let's get into the video. So my first tip, if you're just starting out, is to compare yourself to other kind of artists of your ability in the market, have a look to see what they are selling their work for. And that will be a really good ballpark, good indication as to what you might be able to sell yours to. Now you have to be really objective here. So it's not just that you have been working really hard and you've been putting a lot of hours in and you think, well, okay, that's what I can sell my art for comparing yourself to somebody that's been doing it for 10, 15, 20 years. Because the thing is, you don't really know what's going on behind the scenes, how much work they're putting in, what their following is, whether they've got a really good marketing strategy in place, whether they're selling in shops or in galleries. There's lots of things that you need to factor into this. So try to compare yourself with people of a similar following of a kind of similar type of art because obviously that can be really different and try to be really objective about whether you are actually quite similar in your skill set and in your position in your journey. My second point would be to have a clear consistent strategy for pricing your artwork. So there are two ways to do this. You can either give yourself a living wage so you can set your artwork per hour as to how long it's taken you to create. So I have heard, and I've done a little bit of research on this, I've heard that the minimum that you should be asking for per hour is £25, and this is in the UK. That might sound like quite a lot, but actually the living wage is now about £10. When I was starting work, it was like one ninety eight. Actually, I don't think there was a living wage, but I was earning one ninety eight an hour. So things have come on a lot and obviously everything else has gone up with inflation and that kind of thing. So actually it's not that much when you factor in the cost of your materials, how many hours you've taken to put into your craft to hone your skills and get better and better. It's not actually that much. So if something's taken you four hours, that's only a hundred pounds for a piece of artwork, which is really, really cheap. Now I have looked into the figures when I've typed in how much should you charge per hour as an artist, what comes up over over and over and over again is £25 as a starter point. If you have three years experience, it goes up to £34. And if you have five years plus experience, it goes up to £42. So you can see how that grows over time. And it's a really good benchmark to set your prices on. And also, if you calculate how long things take, then it's just an easy way, a, a kind of a non-emotional way of pricing your artwork. Now, the only problem I see with this method is that if you're starting out, you might be a lot slower. So that kind of goes against the skill set. So if you took 10 hours to complete a, por a portrait because you're new to it, then you would be charging £250 for a piece. Whereas if you're more experienced, you could possibly speed up and it would only take you three hours. So that doesn't seem to really fit together. That's where the mismatch kind of comes in, in my eyes. So you can use that as part of your pricing. So you can kind of use that as a benchmark and I tend to use the other method, which is to price it by size. And what you would do is, is you would times the length by the, the height or the height times the width in inches and find the square inches. So for example, if you've got an eight by 10, which is really easy to work out, that would be 80 square inches. And then you give yourself a figure that you feel fits into that kind of um, price point that you feel comfortable with. So if you had an eight by 10, that would be 80. And then if you're just starting out, if you don't have a lot of experience and you don't have a big following, you could times that by 1.5, which is 120 pounds, or you could times it by two, 160. And then you could slowly, incrementally put that unit price up Every time, the more experience you gain, the more pieces that you sell, so the more confident you will be until finally you'll come to a point where that feels right for now and it's a clear structure for you to work from. And my third point is to try to take the emotion out of it. You've put your heart and soul into this piece, blood, sweat and tears, hours of experimenting, getting it wrong, making mistakes, learning, feeling that 
feeling of excitement when you have a little bit of a breakthrough moment with maybe a texture that you were trying to create. So there's a lot of emotion and a lot of feeling involved. So when somebody says to you, which inevitably they will, well, that's a bit expensive, I didn't really want to pay that, taking the emotion out of it and actually making it a little bit more practical, which is why point two helps, having a structured pricing plan really, really helps. So instead of feeling knocked down by that person and either lowering your prices, which is definitely a no-no, but more importantly, feeling really disheartened, know that it's got nothing to do with your artwork. It doesn't mean that it's not good. It doesn't mean that it's not worth it. What it does mean is that customer is probably not the right one for you. And I think it's really important to hold out for someone that holds that value just as you do, that really values your work and values you as an artist. And that can take time to build up that know, like and trust they want to get to know you as an artist. They want to know your story. They want to know the story behind the piece. And that has a value to somebody so that when they've got it on their wall and somebody asks them a question about it, they can tell the story of how it was created. And that has a massive value to people because art is not a need. It's that whipped cream. It's a want and it's a motive. So it's all about what are the feelings that that piece of artwork can bring out in that person. Does it spark joy? Does it spark reminiscing about a lovely memory or a holiday or a beloved person that they've lost or even somebody that's living a long way away? Does it just make you smile? Does it make you feel joyful because of the colours that are in it? Does it have a favourite animal in there? Does it have an animal that reminds them of a holiday? Is it a beloved pet? There are so many different things that spark emotion and that's what art is all about. And that has a massive value because if you think about what you're gonna be giving to that person that's buying your art, and if you look at it from that point of view, then somebody saying, oh, you know, I don't think I wanna pay that, that's not worth it. It doesn't really fit because it just means that they don't understand, they don't get it to that point. And I think it's really important to wait for that special person that does understand and know that that can take a little bit of time to build up. But when it happens, it's amazing. And you do have to put yourself out there to build those relationships with people and to get to know them and them to get to know you. And that's where that, exchange of energies happened. It's not about the money, it's exchange of energy. So you're giving them something that's going to spark joy. And of course, you deserve to be paid for that and paid for your years of experience and your skills and your ability to create. It has a value and don't devalue yourself. So I really hope you found those tips helpful. If you have any questions about them, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments. And if you have any requests for future videos that you are feeling a bit stuck with or you would like advice on, then leave those in the comments down below as well. If you did like this video, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. I upload art tip videos every Tuesday with a little bit more practical in the art sense. And then on Friday, I upload art business videos all about helping you to move your art business along and make some money in your art. So thank you so much for watching and for giving me a little bit of your precious time. And I really look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.